Okay, an interesting topic came up today after I had posted that Super Lube uh, video about you know keeping your Strat in tune. Uh, some people, you know who you are, Scott. <laughs> Not Scott K. Thank you, Scott K, for the contribution. That that made my day. I really appreciate it. But. Scott, we'll just say Scott. Either way, he wanted to know if the saddles, well, he mentioned Callaham saddles and that they were supposed to be super hard and you couldn't cut grooves in them. I said the grooves are what's grabbing the string when you dive bomb your strap, your tremolo. He said, well, the Callaham uh, bridge pieces are uh, super hard, so you shouldn't be able to cut grooves in them. And I said, well, I disagree. I cut grooves in them just as fast if not faster than uh, any other bridge piece. And I know uh, Bill is probably going to get mad at me for doing this video. But you can see here's a Callahan bridge piece. You can see the groove. Now these are old uh, bridge pieces that I took off my black, black 1964 strap. You see that uh, copper ring or that funny looking colored ring around the groove? Can you see that? That's where I buffed the nickel coating or plating off, which I mistakenly call it chrome, but it's supposed to be nickel. And as I'm buffing, I get to this copper layer. Well, copper soft. And as far as I know, the original Fender Vintage saddles didn't have a copper coating on them. So that nickel and that copper are pretty soft, so you're going to cut a groove pretty quick. And now I'm actually cutting a groove into that hard 115 Rockwell steel that he claims is so hard. Now here is a uh, vintage, here are my vintage saddles that I took off my 64. And you can see it has a groove too, and that's why I started going with replacement bridges, bridge saddles, because I didn't want to wear these things out. And actually, now that I look at them, they aren't as bad as I thought. When I was buffing the groove down, every time I changed the string, I would buff that groove to try to keep it from hanging up on my string. And I noticed, maybe not as much on this one, that I was actually starting to wallow out. A little spot in the center which may you know affect the intonation a little bit and I didn't want to wear out my vintage saddles so I take them off and I replace the just the plain strings the G B and E with uh, either Callaham or raw vintage here's a raw vintage you can see I've got the groove there too I've got quite a few grooves on that and w once we started discussing this on my comments of uh, Superlube, they asked me, well, are they as thick as vintage saddles? And I said, I don't know. I started looking. I said, they look about the same, but they don't look exactly the same, you know. So I started to look at them a little closer and measure them and what I noticed more than anything is you can see this little tail piece curl where the intonation screw goes in the center right here on the left is longer it wraps over the top more and also you can see those machine marks machine tool marks on all of them right here right here and right here let me get a little pointer maybe right there Right there, right there, right there. I like this little microscopic lens. And it's on all of them. Now let's go this direction. See? And that's how they bent those things. And I looked at them like this, and they do look a little thicker. Here's the raw vintage. That's raw, raw vintage, uh, 64 vintage on the left. 
You see, they're a hair thicker too, maybe. Well, actually they are because I already measured them, I'll show you that. So I'm thinking, well, they didn't quite get it exact. They like to claim they got it exact. Uh, raw vintage claims that their nickel plating is directly on the steel, so there is no copper layer in between, which is a good deal because that's they claim that's the way they reverse engineered the old saddles, and that's what they found. They were just nickel on steel, but they aren't as thick, and they don't have as big of a tailpiece that wrap around it. I'm going to call it, for lack of a better term. And I think that these, if I had a really accurate scale, would probably weigh a little bit more, have a little more mass than the new replicas. And that to me is a concern because mass changes everything on your guitar as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you put heavier tuners on your guitar, it's going to sound a little bit different. So, let's see. I did measure these. Took my little and, and shit, let, me, let me get it one where I don't have to hold it with a screw. And actually, the first time I measured it, I got about five point two, five point one. Yeah, it's hard to see through this lens. Sorry about that. Trust me. About five point one three. It really depends on how you do it. Five point two. And you hold it there. Just a raw vintage. The raw vintage and the Callahan were just about the same. 4.7, 4.65, I think I got on the Callahan. Where's the Callahan? Callahan. Yeah, see? four point. It was actually at 4.64. I moved it a little bit. Um... So, there, that tailpiece isn't as long, and then I check the thickness, 1 point, man, I'm getting 1.21 right now, and these are millimeters now, I'll put it in millimeters. One point two seven had a bigger difference before one point two six. Here's the raw vintage. One point two. So they're just a hair thinner. Not quite as much of a wraparound. Now the other thing that really miffs me or upsets me sometimes is when everybody thinks they can improve on the design of the fender parts or the strat in general and if you look at Callahan's advertisement he claims that fender didn't design these correctly and that this uh, string grew right here was too short on the vintage ones and you can see the difference see it's just a little short one so what he did he took it upon himself thinking that this is a better design to lengthen it so he pushed it all the way out which takes some more mass off too if you think about it you're hollowing that thing out even more so you've reduced the mass on these things a little bit now I've talked myself into putting these darn uh, vintage ones back on even if I do wear them out they haven't been on there in years and years but his theory was and I'll go over here to the strat was that 
since and you can see uh, if you look at my strats I've always got the vintage ones on the wound strings and then the uh, wait a second huh that's interesting oh no that's a raw vintage on the G it's just a little rusty and then I put the new ones on the plain strings but this uh, slot here he claims uh, Callahan claims that your string shouldn't hit there and what that does is increase the bend angle and, and well I might not be explaining this right but his main argument is that without this string hitting the bridge saddle in this slot it puts more down pressure on the top of the saddle which is probably true and gives you more tone because it's pushing down more on the screws you know if you did the mathematics if you did push down at this point and you had less here and you add this little bit of push here it probably comes out equally I'm just guessing just knowing some math but you know sometimes I'm wrong either way this is where I have my problem the amount of pressure on these grooves as they cut in when you I'm, I'm doing my whammy when you do the whammy and it, this guitar is not having a problem really it doesn't have big grooves on it but when you come back and that tension slowly increases right before the you heat it uh, hit equilibrium on your springs and it evens out to being in tune right at last microscopic little area where it's coming back the tension increases on top of the saddle and that's where it'll stick and it'll grab the string and pull it tight tighter than it was before so you go it's kind of like going down grabbing the screen string and pulling it back and making it tight grabbing it pulling it tight grabbing it pulling it tight so if you put the lube there right there then uh, it reduces that grabbing effect now that's because I dive bomb all the way I don't even think I have this thing set up to dive bomb all the way to max it'll go so you know I've got the strings almost loose and then I come back and it grabs just at the split second before I'm you know in tune again and it grabs it so I'm thinking actually Fender designed those slots to help prevent that now this is just my theory but that's why I don't like messing with Fender series because or designs because I I've, I've been in the design business enough to know that a lot of trial and error goes into those things they may have noticed that it was sticking and they said well let's reduce the pressure on the top by shortening up the slot the string will hit here it'll decrease the bend angle and it'll decrease the pressure here I'm just guessing because I know how those guys you know figure things out and so maybe they designed it to hit that slot now granted it doesn't always hit that slot even on a vintage the vintage uh, saddle see it's barely hitting here but the wound strings usually aren't a problem and it's barely hitting here and you can see maybe it's hitting here and Stevie Ray Vaughan used to put tubing plastic tubing up here up to this point to reduce the friction there because he thought he they said he broke strings there I've never broken a string there maybe once or twice in 50 years you know but uh, sometimes I'm thinking maybe he didn't realize it but he was actually moving the string up even farther away and reducing the angle even more and maybe that reduces some friction here because you're reducing the pressure on top of the saddle and you're also uh, I forgot what I was going to say, but either way, it reduces the, the pressure on top. 
and maybe that was even helping more in that short slot design because I'm sure he had probably vintage saddles on his strats. And I do put one of those tubings on my G-string, on my Nash, to try to uh, reduce the pressure because my G-string is where I seem to have a lot of my problems. Either way, that's the purpose of the lube. Now you know that the reissue, whatever you want to call them, saddles aren't exactly like the the patent pending fender vintage ones. These are 1964, somewhere around there. And that's too bad. The ones that I haven't tried are the pure vintage fender ones, which they say they actually retooled or revamped some of their old tools and to make them so I might try them next they're, they're about the same price they're about forty dollars a set and I'll usually buy a, a set and then I'll use three for the plain strings and I'll save three and then when those wear out I'll use the other three but uh, that's my theory hopefully you see that there is a difference maybe next time I'll get some fender ones and we'll compare those I'm working on a few songs. So, uh, here, let's, let's put, I'm going to cover you up here for a second, please. Working on the, the end of Hey Joe at Woodstock. Uh, I realized that the reason I never worked on that song, because for some reason at Woodstock, Jimmy was tuned to E, which is very unusual for him. I don't know why he did that. But it drives me nuts because then i got to reset up my guitar and everything to do just that little bit of a song. I'm working on Jungle, maybe, which is just kind of a partial song on both sides of the sky. And this is my old 62, 66, and it's kind of a hodgepodge strat, candy apple red. You can see the gold undercoat. I call it the jawbreaker because for some reason I think it has a factory refin and it's really thick. But this is a cool old guitar and it you can see I don't really have a lot of trouble with it as far as tuning goes. But all right, well, I'll let you guys go, but that's my theory, and that's uh, everything I know about saddles. If I was going to pick some today, I'd probably get the fenders just to try them, but if they didn't have the fenders, I would probably go with raw vintage. I've always liked their tremolo springs, too. Talk to you guys later.